I was curious to know if there are any um, political action groups such that, like the Israelis have in Washington, uh, trying to change the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. Is there any sort of pressure being put on Washington? Okay. Um. <laughs> you, don't, you don't hear about much. Um, yes. So there, are, there, there are Muslim political action groups. Um, Muslim. Um, I put the name of one of them up there. Those had that kind of focus as well. Yeah. So um, there's the the one that's most prominent in that um, regard, was established most prominently in that regards the Council of American uh, Islamic Relations, which is a very odd thing. Like, how does America have relations with Islam? <laughs> like, how does a nation <laughs> have relations uh, with a... And um, most of the people who were involved in that organization were political activists who were involved in the Palestinian liberation movements um, and uh, then decided after 1991 um, to be able to work in terms of religion rather than in terms of uh, the Palestinian or you know, Palestinian liberation or Palestinian organization. Um, there are a lot of Arab organizations that are also working on this because the Palestinian issue is not just a Muslim issue, right? The Christian pa Palestinians. Um, um, the, uh, the Council of American and Islamic Foreign Relations is slowly as um, particularly after the Oklahoma City bombing, as Muslim civil rights become a more of an important issue, its mission has slowly gradually changed and they've become more of a civil rights organization, even though they originally they were much more political um, than they are um, that they are today. Um, the fact of the matter is, and this is endemic to the way in which people the the state Muslims, contemporary Muslims find themselves in the United States. It has been an atmosphere has been created in the United States where it's different. It's difficult for Muslims um, to speak on political issues. Um, so even when you talk, uh, so you know, as soon as anyone begins to say anything about uh, the Palestinian Israeli issue, they're completely attacked, right? And there are uh, every minutia of the history is always debated. So people who are not sure about it stand back. And the situation itself is so depressing that one doesn't know exactly how to get involved. Um, people like Daniel Pipes, have anyone heard about them? Um, so people like Daniel Pipes, for example, attack any Muslim organization as a militant organization. Organizations that have never advocated for militancy simply because of maybe the, way, the influence they may have. So there's been an attempt to, so groups like CARE, Muslim Student Associations, have been attacked by a lot of these groups, uh, pro-Israeli um, uh, political activists, pro-Israeli political activists, and which has silenced a lot of Muslims. And then policies that the state has adopted since have also made it much more difficult for people um, to speak up. So even when you find issues of surveillance and things like that that come up, Muslim political organizations stand back until some non-Muslim Christian or, <laughs> or non-Muslim uh, political organization or ACLU goes forward and says something and then they piggyback on their coat rail because they, coat tail because um, they don't know how that would be perceived, right? And would it be an anti-American? Would Muslims' loyalties be challenged all of a sudden? And I personally find it to be, uh, uh, this to be very problematic uh, because uh, the, I mean, forget about the silencing effect that it has on freedom of speech and things of that sort, but American Muslims have had a long history in America from which they could address America's problems. And they're not being told to participate in it. Uh, I'll give you one very concrete example that hits home for me is um, in a few years back, uh, you, remember, you may remember this, the bombing the, of, in Portland, right? There was, a, there was a young man who was under FBI surveillance who was arrested because he was going to blow up a, a van. Wow. Um, they blow up a van at the Christmas uh, light uh, 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 ceremony in the middle of heart of downtown Portland. And when you talk to the Muslim community, they were saying, they were, you know, who had, would meet with the FBI and the police, and they're saying, if you knew about this guy, why didn't you tell us? Like, if you knew there was such a, like, we could have helped him. Why destroy his family's life and destroy his life in this way that you have, like, you know, by giving him, um, you know, there's the issue of whether or not he was entrapped or things of that sort. Of course, the FBI was very careful about making sure that he's not entrapped, but all this stuff, you know, he wouldn't have done this stuff if he, no one had come to him from the FBI. 
Um, and the Muslim community was saying, why, why were we pushed out of it, right? We could have actually helped with this issue, right? And the organizations like the Muslim Public Affairs Committee um, that was based in Los Angeles for a very long time have been trying to say, um, you know, we're, we could be part of all these efforts, right? That we could, and people who have looked at the his, uh, mosques in the United States routinely, a scholar have looked at mosques in the United States routinely show that people who are, have a foot in the Muslim community in the United States, who participate in Muslim communities in the United States, um, uh, are much less likely to radicalize or to do any of these types of things that the state is, is worried about. I was also thinking about the lawyer who was wrongly accused of yeah. his children. Yeah, Brandon. Oh, okay. I was wondering because he was too young to Yeah, the other one, but the other one, his family wasn't the Christian. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. I also just want to ask one follow-up question, and that is, has to do with money. Mm -hmm. um, American Jewish organizations have put a lot of money into the protection of Israel and political efforts to make sure that the U.S. continues to um, stand up for Israel. And I wonder if there were similar financial goals as well with uh, Muslim organizations in the United States. I'll give you an anecdote and you could um, make your own conclusions about it. Um, since this is being taped, I won't name the mosque. I was in a mosque, <laughs> in a prominently Muslim, a very prominent mosque uh, in, the, in the United States during the Obama's first campaign. Um, and uh, they, at that month, they talked about, uh, in very sort of kind of sign ways, to try to say that we're not supporting Hillary Clinton in the primaries, we're supporting Obama, and that they had said that they had gone to Obama to offer funds. And Obama had said, Thank, no, thanks, we're fine, don't worry about it. Just, you know. Okay. Uh, that, that says almost everything about it. And, and that's not accidental, right? There has, there has, been, a, there has been a long sort of political movement to stigmatize anything associated with Islam, Muslim political activities, to the point that I say, I was shocked to find uh, Ellison, uh, Representative Ellison, who was the first uh, congressman elect, Muslim congressman elected to office, um, actually talking about the Palestinian-Israeli issue. I thought like, oh, this is the death of him. What is he doing? Like, why would he do this? And when I talked to political science fr scientist friends, so like, of course, he should be talking about this, like, you know, and he's not doing it in a very political, savvy way. But for me, it was just, you know, when I saw him actually, you know, saying he's visiting Gaza, but even him was very, you know, he's very careful. I visited Gaza. I never met with anyone from Hamas, you know. <laughs> I never, you know, never, never came near any of these, these groups or never did any of this type of stuff. So, um, so it's a, it's, a very, it's a very difficult atmosphere. It's a very problematic atmosphere because um, you, know, you were talking about um, radicalization and jihad with uh, Dr. Pickens. Um, if, we, if we look at uh, thinking Muslim, young Muslim who wants to address the problems he sees in the world today, particularly involving Muslim, what are the voices he hears? Does, does he know about people like Noam Chomsky does he know about the divestment movements in, in Israel? Or does he know about suicide bombers or all these people who have gotten all these attention in the, in the media? So I actually wrote an article about Mohammed Mahmoud who was supposed to blow up this um, who, uh, uh, Christmas tree lighting ceremony in Portland talking, uh, titled uh, for, God, uh, for God or for Media? Question mark. Because he actually talked about like he wanted to do something that would be spectacular, that would get two thumbs up, uh, you know, uh, that that would be mediatized. Because uh, you know, terrorism is not terrorism unless people see it. And the ways in which people are self-identifying today are uh, it's not self-identifying. The ways in which they could politically be involved, the most prominent voices you hear are these sort of radical voices. Because the more Injuries are either silent or they have to work behind the scenes, or you know they're not the prominent voices that one hears about. So you either hear about the completely apolitical Muslim, um, you know, who prays and fasts and you know is a good old American, or you hear about you know people militant Muslims or people blowing themselves up. So I think it's a very, very problematic issue, which also tells us that we could expect a lot more of these things. <laughs>